Well, we had a really, really lame winter in Minnesota, and we have been paying for it in more than one way. Uh, right now, the weather is just horrendous. It's been so windy every day. It's just really difficult. Blustery wind conditions changing, switching, all the things. And then uh, the ticks this year, I feel like I just keep pulling ticks off, like every couple minutes. I don't know how, this is ridiculous. I've never had this many ticks in just one shooting session before. I feel like I have to burn all my clothes with fire now everywhere. Well, I'm going to put this guy to death, and then we're going to talk about the Athlon Helos BTR Gen 2. This is their 2 to 12 version. It's sitting on a BCA AR-10. It's a side charger, and I've had really good luck with this rifle. It's been shooting really, really well. After these 30 mile an hour gusts that keep whipping through are done, I'll shoot a little bit and talk more about the optic because it's about time for me to do a follow-up video that I've been waiting on for probably over a year. So for me, I'm always going to start by talking about the reticle. Uh, the other features are great, but if it doesn't have a good reticle, I'm not going to be very into it. I am more likely to shoot an optic with a good reticle and limited features rather than an optic with all the other features and externals, but not a good reticle. The reticle is what I look at, and that's what's going to help me be effective. And I would just say, overall, a simple mill reticle will take me a long ways on almost every rifle I have. This reticle has a one MOA center dot, and I'm a huge fan of that. I've got a four inch target down there, and I've got a six inch target down there that I'm looking at, and I'm able to favor the sides of the target because it is pretty windy right now. I'm able to favor the sides, and it doesn't take up the whole target. It does have the lateral windage lines, which I am going to need when I move further back. You know, I'm gonna be holding two, three mils of wind as a minimum. It does have a very functional two power. So if I'm shooting close, the eye box changes a little bit there, but it's not too bad. I'm not gonna complain about the two power. I actually like it. it. Gives me a nice wide field of view. I just noticed that my eye relief, like I need to come in a little bit. It's kind of normal. That two power um, with the illumination especially, I'm able to use that in a deer hunting scenario really effectively. Close range shots, I can make out the reticle, that one MOA center dot picks out, or I can pick it out just enough, and it's really the uh, vertical and horizontal lines that are the thick bold lines that when you minimize your, your reticle and it's starting to shrink, those come up and fill the gap, and it almost becomes a little bit like a duplex, a little bit like one. You add illumination and there's some value there for some people. So usable two power, not really super usable for long distance shooting. I don't know why you would shoot long distance on two power, but if you were taking a longer shot on six power, so halfway through, very, very usable. I actually think the reticle is like visible and not too hard to use, probably around three power, four power, Five, power six, five. Yeah, I mean, at longer distances here, I'm just looking at 330 yards. But I'd say three power and up, it's pretty usable. I can contrast well against the background here. I can make out those holdover lines. The windage dots are big enough that there's something you can do with them. It might be hard to spot your misses in vegetation with such low power, but if you're shooting against dirt, for sure. I would be able to make out the target moving, I think, by about four or six power. But most of the time, if I'm shooting a little further, I'm shooting the prone, I'm gonna go up to 12 power or maybe 10 power. Field of view is pretty good. I do have uh, a throw lever on here. I think this is necessary to make this package a little more functional. There, There is a, um, oh, what the devil do you call it? I do have a honeycomb on my front objective here. That was uh, something a friend threw on there when he had it, and uh, I don't need that, but if you, 
I don't know if you've ever noticed scopes are shiny so if you didn't want to be seen I suppose in a DMR setup that would be useful I think I might pick up just a slight shift reticle shift it's hard for me to tell and I've wondered about that a long time there might be a slight reticle shift just like 11.9 power and go to 12 power and it seems like there's a slight reticle shift I haven't been able to be 100% sure about that and more importantly my data is still true so probably not it's probably fine and this shoots tight enough that I can tell within a couple tenths if something has shifted so I feel pretty confident about the optics so far a couple times today that flag has just about bent the pole <laughs> It's gone straight a couple times, which is crazy. When a flag goes just totally straight, flat, looks like it's frozen in time, that's a really hard wind. I'm like holding everything down. One thing I can mention is that at 300 yards, I'm right at 300, on my paper, which is a light colored paper, shooting against a four inch black um, box and I'm impacting to the right in the light colored paper and I can see those impacts just barely I did have to look at it for a second to really pick them out but on 12 power I can see those impacts at 300 and the Sun is at my back I have some advantages here but it is sufficient to pick those out so if you have decent vision you probably can see better than I can and I think it would be okay for spotting your impacts on like a 30 caliber size bullet So full disclosure, this is probably an important thing to point out, just being truthful, I had actually traded this away to a friend for a little while and then traded it back not long after because I realized I really, really like this optic. I have a hard time not having it. And it's because it has a lot of features that I like. It's constructed the way I like. I like the footprint. And of course, like I said, I really like the reticle. Now, if you want to use this as a ranging thing or a deer hunting thing, that's not really for me. That's not my channel. I don't talk a lot about that, but I think it's a very effective hunting optic. I think this I'd prefer over every three to nine out there, uh, maybe even with better glass, if I was going to take an extended range shot. It's pretty cool, but I'm not going to talk about hunting application a lot. I'll just say that generally for me, deer hunting, uh, elk, all the kind of normal big game animals, absolutely this is a sweet optic and it's pretty affordable too. But for me, my application would be a DMR kind of setup like this, mostly just target practice because that's what I do. I shoot steel and I shoot paper, guys, quite a bit. And I really like it. My vision isn't as good as it used to be. And I like being able to see that center dot and hold it precisely against other things. I like the contrast. The glass quality is acceptable for sustaining that reticle. And even when I dial really far, so I actually need to double check how much I have left in here. So there's 10 mils. So on a zero MOA base, I have 15 mils internal, eight in the reticle. And that is plenty enough for what I'm gonna do with this setup that will get me past a thousand yards with just the 15 mils. Am I gonna shoot this past a thousand yards? Only for fun, just for fun, nothing serious not target practice really even just uh, plinking for the most part but the capability is there and there's nothing I hate more than finding the limitations of something I want things just to keep going and going and going and the versatility of this optic has been very very good I like the side parallax feature the dial itself is relatively smooth it's been functional numbers appear to actually line up for the first few hundred yards to my eye that's kind of irrelevant illumination is fine but I think it's what this optic does. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of optics in this uh, price point with the features, the capability, and just the, uh, the point of use, the way that people are gonna use it being constructed properly. There's not a lot there. I do like March optics, and March has a few optics that I need to try out and compare against this. 
a little bit. But I'm going to have a hard time saying that the March is worth it for the average person out there. That's kind of more of a specialty item. They're almost novelty at the price. But I love them. I do love those March optics. This, for being, you know, I see them used going right around 300 bucks. For 300 bucks, it's so hard for me to think of an optic that's more versatile than this, more capable and preferable for the kind of things I'm going to do with it. I have nicer, more expensive optics that are thousands of dollars more than this, and I don't show everything I have on the channel because there's some stuff that's just for the channel and some stuff that's just for me or competition. But I'm pretty happy with this, and I think most of my subscribers for the things they're doing would appreciate this for maybe some sort of DMR competition, a two-gun competition, hunting like I've mentioned, or just plinking like I am. This is a pretty good optic, and that's my, my feedback for you. If you have questions, you can go ahead and comment them down below. I'm going to shoot a little more. Hopefully the wind turns off on me for a while. But I'm super, super, super glad I got it back because I value this thing so much, and I'm shooting it really well.